Hey, I'm back. And I have my ball here. So here is a challenge. Do you think you could beat me spinning the ball? Or can I beat you? Ready? On your mark, get set, go. Uh -huh. Okay, you can, you can take a second turn. Go ahead. I'm sure you've messed up by now. Go ahead. All right, did I beat you? Let's try it again. Ready? Go. Oops. Okay, you won that time. <laughs> Only once when I was given talks did a boy beat me. His name is Larry, and I couldn't believe it. So, remember again, the body reveals the person. So you learned another thing about me. You learned that I can... Not only juggle, but spin a ball on my finger. <laughs> um, so why did I want to do that? Just to kind of start with something uh, unique. So let me um, tell you uh, this one story as I get to this next um, idea. And that story has to do with this one thing that happened one time with my friend Molly and me. Okay, we were um, in Colorado. We were driving around. I'm from Texas, so I've never basically seen snow. So we were going around, and we weren't planning on walking at all, so we were in the blazer just um, moseying around and just looking at the beautiful sights. Well, it kept going on and on and on, and there was no place to turn around. But it started getting kind of dark, and we thought we should probably turn around. We started getting worried. So finally, after a little bit longer, Molly just says, Monica, I'm going to just turn around. And so she went, Arrgh! actually, because it was snow, it went, Arrgh! and so what happened? Yes, it fishtailed into a ditch. So there we were in this ditch, basically helpless. Our cell phones weren't working. No one knew we were there. <laughs> we didn't dress properly, so we, weren't, we didn't have warm clothes, basically, and there we were stuck. So we tried to, like, dig out of the tires, and we tried to stick sticks that we could under to get some traction. Nothing worked. So I said to Molly, I said, okay, Molly, we're going to have to pray. So I'm telling you, we called on all the angels and saints, and then I said, okay, I'm going to push this out. She was like, what? She said, yeah, I'm going to push this out. And I said, okay. No, wait, I said, I'm going to push this out. Yes, and this is a true story. And so what I did was, I put my feet up on the other side of the embankment, and then I got under this thing, and I pushed, and I had told her, don't stop, and we go. I push and push and push and push, and sure enough, the blazer started going, and so then I had to run to catch up. I had to open the door and jump in to that blazer. I don't recommend this. Don't do it, okay? Your parents will be mad at me, okay? It just so happened I had to do that, okay? Why do I tell you that story? Because part of my talk, we're going to talk about masculinity and femininity. And sometimes when I've given this, these, this talk um, around the country, some girls come back and they think it um, demeans them. They think it's insulting. So if I say that guys are a certain way, it doesn't mean that we women are not strong in our own way. I mean, I pushed a blazer. Okay, for heaven's sake. All right, so what am I going to talk to you about with this segment? Um, I already talked to you about what um, using another person is all about. Remember, that's the opposite of love. So now, I'd like to talk to you about, really, that the body and soul should always correspond. And then I want to talk to you more specifically about masculinity and femininity. Okay, so what do I mean by body and soul corresponding? One of the things Pope John Paul says in his Theology of the Body is this, that we should have pure hearts. And he gets this from Jesus who talks about Matthew 5, blessed are the pure of heart. And then our hearts that are pure, all we have to do is let our bodily actions correspond. And then that's really holiness. So, for example, if I know in my heart, I've been taught and formed by my parents in the Catholic Church to know that cheating, let's say on a test, is wrong. And so I might be tempted to cheat off of my friend's work or homework, but I knew in my heart it's wrong. And so I allow my bodily actions to correspond, knowing that I shouldn't cheat. And then I don't. That is going to make us happy and holy. If I know that I should go ahead and do my chores without my mom or my dad helping, then I should do it. And when I do that, you will understand that you will be changed more and more 
because that's the life of virtue, body and soul always corresponding. Now, unfortunately, we humans have weaknesses. And so then what happens sometimes is we unbe ourselves. The word unbe comes from Pope Benedict. And what that means is this, if you'll see this diagram here, you'll see the snowman has this split in the middle. And what does that do? It shows that his body and soul, in a sense, are split. For instance, let's go back to the idea about cheating. I know it's wrong, and let's say this is my um, uh, test or my homework. And I use my body and I've cheated, so I went against what I know in my heart, so I'm sort of splitting my body and soul, the heart being like the soul. And then I turn this paper in to my teacher. What does it say to him or her? It says, this is my work, I did it. But what do you know inside? You know inside that you did not do it. So handing that paper in is a lie. It's going against who you are in your interior, in your inside self. It's sort of splitting you. What about lying? So you go up to your parents and you know the truth is that, let's say you got home at 4.30 in the afternoon when you should have gotten home at 4 and you told your parents, well, I got home at 4. But you know inside that you didn't. So you are, in a sense, splitting your body from your soul because your body lay actions are doing the opposite from what your heart knows and says. And I would suggest to you the more and more we um, unbe ourselves, the less whole and happy we will be. But Pope John Paul says, in Jesus, especially living in the Holy Spirit's power, which some of y'all are going to be confirmed soon or have been confirmed, when you live in Jesus and you let the power of His Holy Spirit for the glory of the Father live and work in you, then you will slowly but surely come to be whole your body and soul will be together. And those things that start, you know, pulling you apart, yes, you might fail, but what does Jesus give us? He gives us the sacraments, especially in this situation, the sacrament of reconciliation. So you go to confession and you say, you know, I've lied or cheated or, or whatever else, and then you get a fresh start. It's like that action, that sacrament, allows your body and soul to be together again, and then you can work hard so that the more and more you live the life of virtue, the less and less you will fall into the temptation of doing that. And then the more and more you go to the sacrament of the Eucharist, then you will see how with Jesus, receiving Jesus into your very body, then He will give you the strength to be able to not split yourself, but to be happy and holy. So that is one of the essential things of the theology of the body that we can learn, that our bodies and souls correspond. And that is holiness. Okay, I said I was going to talk about something else, but let me um, take a break for a second. And then what I want you to do this time is I want you to um, go ahead and um, maybe get someone that you know is strong, maybe your dad or something, maybe he wants to watch, and then your mom because I want them to be sort of like your, um, what do you say, show and tell. Okay, so go get your show and tell and I'll be right back.